In this lesson, we're going to look at the normal distribution. A normal curve is a symmetrical curve that represents the normal distribution. It can also be called a bell curve. At the bottom here, we can see that shape. This is our bell curve. Normal distribution is data that when graphed as a histogram or a frequency polygon results in a unimodal symmetric distribution about the mean. So it looks like the normal curve. Graphing a set of group data can help you determine whether the shape of the frequency polygon can be approximated by a normal curve. You can make reasonable estimates about data that approximates a normal distribution because the data that is normally distributed has special characteristics. So that's what we're going to look at here. Now this curve you're probably going to want it on your cheat sheet, right? And we're going to add some stuff to that in a moment. It says normal curves can vary in two main ways. The mean determines the location of the center of the curve on the horizontal axis. The standard deviation determines the width and the height of the curve. So if we look here, in this graph they use the symbol mu for where we would normally write x bar. And then sigma is our standard deviation. So if we move 1 to the right, that's our mean plus 1 standard deviation. This is our mean plus 2 standard deviations and so on. Okay, so that's what that means at the bottom there. So it's also showing us that 60% of our data is between one standard deviation above the mean and one standard deviation below the mean. You can see mu minus one, but mean minus one standard deviation. That's that interval. The other thing that's missing from here is this last bit. That value is not given, so this is 0.15%. And the same on the other side, that's 0.15%. All right, so it says the properties of a normal distribution can be summarized as follows. The graph is symmetrical, the mean, median, and mode are all equal or close and fall at the line of symmetry. So our line of symmetry is right here down the middle. Okay. About 68% of the data is with one standard deviation of the mean. So that's all of this in here what they're talking about within one standard deviation. So one standard deviation above and below. 95% of the data is within two standard deviations and 99.7% of the data is within three standard deviations of the mean. The area under the curve can be considered as one unit since it represents 100% of the data. Generally measurements of living things such as mass, height, and length have a normal distribution. So we're going to be dealing quite a bit with this normal curve, so let's learn how to read it. Turn to the next page here. So example one says a mean was found to be 23 grams and their standard deviation is 1.5. So that means 1.5 grams away from the mean. Draw a normal distribution showing three standard deviations above and below the mean. So let's go ahead and fill that out. So they said our mean is 23, so I'm going to put that here. And then above, one standard deviation above would be 23 plus 1.5. Now it's going to get quite messy if we write that, so I'm going to instead write what that sum is, and that would be 24.5. The next one would be 23 plus 2 times 1.5, or 23 plus 3, which is actually 26. So I'm just going to write 26 there. If we continue this way, this would be 27.5. Now, if we go in the other direction, we would have 23 minus 1.5. So we'd be left with 21.5 here. And this would be 23 minus 2 times, because it's two standard deviations below. So it'd be 23 minus 3, or 30, or sorry, 20. And then keep going, this would be 18.5. Now, when you're labeling, okay, we've got all of our values there, but let's also label the percentages, and the percentages don't change. So this would be 0 0.15%, 20%, not 20%, 2.35%. I'm looking at the same values that are on my previous page. I was just misreading. So that's the 2.35, next would be the 13.5, and so on. 
34%. And then we're going back down, right? Now these are actually rounded values according to the actual ones. They're a little bit longer in terms of the decimal places, but this is good for what we need. Okay, so my graph is done. Now it says what percent of the data is between 23 and 24 grams? So 24.5. So between 23 and 24.5, we can see that that would be 34%. So that's what I mean by when we're reading right off. The next question says between 21.5 and 26. So that would be highlighting 25.5, 21.5 and 26. So how would we figure that out? Well that's the 34 plus another 34 plus 13.5. So if you add all that up, you would have 81.5% of the data. And the next question between 20 and 23 grams, that would be in here, all of us in there. So 13.5 plus 34, which would be 47.5. So I'm just adding these up. So this is what they're asking when they're asking for the percent of the data. So that means that's where all of the values are within that part of the bell curve or the normal distribution. So keep going here, 27.5 grams. If it's greater than 27.5 grams, we're looking right at this top end. So that would just be 0.15%. Very, very small percentage in there. And then less than 24.5 grams, that's actually quite a bit of our curve because 24.5 is here, so less than would be everything in here. That would be all of that. So if we add all of that together, that would be our 0 0.15 plus 2.35 plus 13.5 plus 34 plus 34. And that would give us an answer of 84%. Now another way of looking at this, right? Oops, another way of looking at this, if I deleted that, is half of the table is 50%. So all of this, from 23 to the bottom, this is all 50%. So you just have to add the extra 34 to the 50%, because that's half of the curve plus an extra 34%. So if you wanted to calculate it that way, we could have said 50% plus 34%, and you would still get the same answer of 84%. Now, F says, by how many standard deviations does a score of 26 different from the mean? So that's something different, right? That's not what, they're not asking us to find the curve, they're asking where that is. So we can see, that the mean is 23 and 26, in order to get to 26, we had to jump not one, but two standard deviations over, right? We had to go two standard deviations over. So that's what they're asking visually. So we would say two. Now, if you didn't have that picture, you could have said, okay, 26 minus 23, right? And then divide it by the number of standard or to the standard deviation to get an answer of two as well. Why does that work? Well, that gets you the difference between the value that we're looking at and the mean by subtracting them, and then by dividing by the standard deviation, it will give you how many intervals we went over to get to that point. So either way you want to do it, you get an answer of two. For G, G is a little different too. It says items that contain less than 21.5 grams will be rejected. So how many will be rejected out of 2,000? Well, what does that mean? Okay, well, 21.5 grams, where is that in our table? So anything less, so that would be anything in here. 
So first of all, what percentage is that? Let's do that part first. Well, 0 0.15 plus 2.35 plus 13.5. So we'll do that. That tells us that 16% will be rejected. But 16% of what? Well, 16% of that 2,000. So 2,000 are there, whatever this happens to me, these items. So of those 2,000, 16% of them will be rejected. Well, how many is that? Well, to get 16% of 2,000, we would change the 16% first to a decimal and then multiply by 2,000. And you would get 320. So 320 items would be rejected. If there was 25,000, you would do the same math times 25,000 and that would give us 4,000 items. What is the probability that a score will be between 21.5 and 23 grams? I'm going back up to the top. 21.5 and 23, well we can see right from our table, that's just in here. Whoops, that's not highlighted. <laughs> that's just 34%. No math down there, just reading it right off the. And the last one, what is the probability that a score will be less than 20 grams? Less than 20 is right in here. So 0.15 plus 2.3. and that would give us 2.5%. Now if you go back to the questions we just did, it says what is the probability? Whereas when we were looking at the questions before, it said what percent? So I've given these as percent, but when we're talking about probability, probability can be stated as a percent, it could be stated as a decimal, or it could be stated as a fraction. So really, we could have written 0 0.34, and we could have written 0 0.025 and that would match probability a little bit better than just writing it as a percent. Although percent is a measure of probability, if they're specifically saying probability, probably better to write the decimal place. So that's how you read data off of a normal curve and we've got a, a couple different examples there of how we could do that. All right, let's take a look at example two. Example two says, an experiment was performed to determine the approximate mass of a penny. 300 pennies were weighed and recorded. So we've got our mass here, measured in grams, and we've got our frequency. So this is a frequency table. A says use to technology to determine the mean, median, mode, and standard deviation. So you're going to put mass into L1, and you're going to put frequency into L2. Take out our graphing calculators, and let's go ahead and do that. Once you have all your data in, we can go back and go second, not second, sorry, stat calc, statistics, and remember you're graphing a frequency table, so you need both L1 and L2, because L2 is the frequency list. All right, so we can see our mean is 3.087. We can round to two decimal places. Standard deviation is 0.12 grams. Our median, if we scroll down, is 3.1 grams and the mode, well, we're going to have to look at the list to find the mode. So let's go ahead and record this. Now it's nice to have the frequency table in order to figure out the mode because the mode is given by the value that comes up the most often. And in our case, 94 is the highest value in our frequency table, which means that 3.1 grams is the mode. All right, in B, it says, if this is considered a normal distribution out of a sample of 5,000 coins, how many would be expected to weigh between 3.21 and 3.33 grams? So what they're saying is first, let's draw this normal curve, and you're gonna get better at drawing these as we move on, because you're gonna be drawing a lot of them. Now our mean 
is given as, we've written that 3.09 grams, and I'm getting it just from up here. Now, our standard deviation is 0.12 grams. So one standard deviation above, if we add that on, would be 3.21, and that's this value here. If we do another standard deviation above that mean, that would give us our 3.33. Okay, now you can keep going and draw your whole chart, but we don't need to because we're being asked between 3.21 and 3.33. So if we know that this is a normal distribution, this would be 34%, right? And the next one would be 13.5%. So it's 13.5% of pennies are between 3.21 grams and 3.33 grams. So what is that for the number of coins? Well, we've got 5,000 coins. So we would take 0 0.135 times it by 5,000 coins. We would get that 675 coins would weigh between 3.21 grams and 3.33. C, it said, would it be very likely that you would have more than 100 coins out of the sample of 5,000 that weighed more than 34.5 grams? Well, where is that on our chart? Well, if I keep adding standard deviations, that would be the next one here, 3.45. So what we're being asked here is, okay, if there's 5,000 in this range here, that would be 0.15%. And now 0.15% of 5,000 is what? Well, that's 7.5 coins. So when we're asking, is it likely to have 100 of those coins be more than 3.5? Well, it's not very likely. It's very unlikely. Okay. So although we're talking theoretically here, there could be 100, but it's very unlikely. There should only be between 7 or 8 in that range, right? It should be very close to what we're getting theoretically. Create a histogram to view the data so and a frequency polygon. So if we take our data out again here, everything's still in there under stat 1. So if we turn our plots on, turn them on. I've got L2 and L3 here, so I want to change that to L1 and L2. And if I go zoom 9, okay, you can see there's my histogram. And if I go back in and change plot 2 to a polygon, I'm going to do L1 and L2 here. Zoom 9 you can see the general curve here, right? So what we're being asked here, it says, um, using your graphing calculator, create a histogram and a frequency polygon on the same graph to view the data. Why are we doing that? Well, you can see that you're getting that normal distribution. In general, you can see the picture matches our curve. Let's look at example three, actual distribution. A class of 30 students receive the following marks in a math exam. A says use technology to find the mean, median, mode, and standard deviation. So take the time, put it in your calculator, and find those values. I'm going to skip that part just to move the video on, but we've done lots of examples of that. Once you do, you should get your mean as 68.6%, your standard deviation is 12.0%, the median is 70 and there's multiple modes 62 63 65 71 73 75 and 81 now B says sketch a normal curve and mark the points that are 1 2 and 3 standard deviations from the mean so our mean is 68.6 that's my mean one standard deviation above if a standard deviation is 12, so add 12, this would give me 80.6. Add another one, 92.6, and add another one, 
104.6. If we go in the other direction, 56.6, 44.6, and 32.6, going above and below the mean. Okay, so now we're supposed to put all of our data in here. So looking through all the values up here, how many of those values are between 56.6 and 68.6, for example? So if I just do that one, you can start down at the bottom and work your way up wherever you want to. I just started in the middle because I know that's going to be the most. So if I'm looking at my data, I can write them all out. So 63, the other 63, 57, 65, 62, 59, 68, 62, and 65. So I'm just looking up here and knocking those ones off my list, right? Crossing all of those ones off. So those are in there. So there's nine values. Oops. There are nine values that go in that region. Now I'm going to go ahead and do that for all of them. So look through, sort through your data. If you want to put it into L1 and sort it as your list, that would make things really easy. And you could start at the bottom and see that, well, 41 is in here, so there's only one. Then keep reading and you would get, okay, 49, 52, 53, 55, because everything's going to be in order for you, and there's four there. You can either do that or look at your list. Either way, you'll get all of your data. So continue through the normal distribution. So from our data now, we're going to create a frequency table. So all I've done, we're using our sigma, we're using our standard deviation as the interval width. So 32.6 to 44.6 is one interval, 44.6 to 56.6 is the other interval, and so on. And then just using the values that you counted, you're putting that in the frequency. So 1, 4, 9, 11, five and zero. So you've got your interval widths and you've got your frequencies. Now the last question is, is this actually a normal distribution? Well how do we know? Well we're going to test to see out of all of our 30 students what percentage of them are actually in that middle region between 56.6 and 80.6 because we know if it truly is a normal distribution it would fit our normal curve that we got on our first page here of 68%, right? So we're going to test to see if the data in here actually matches what we have going on in our table. So let's go ahead and do that. So in theory, we know that 68% of numbers are within one standard deviation. Let's see what our actual data says. Well, if we count up everything in the middle, that would be our 9 and our 11. So that would give us 20 of our 30 data points. We'll times that by 100% to see what the percentage is, and we get 66.7% of numbers within one standard deviation. So if we compare the 66.7 with 68%, I would say that that's very, very close. So we can conclude that yes, it does have a normal distribution. Let's take a look at one last example. Example four of actual distribution. Now that was a lot of work to draw the normal distribution and show, so on, but it's nice to have that visual. Now if we were to do this a little bit quicker, with this next example, I'm going to show you how we can do that without actually having to draw out all of our data. It says the following are waist sizes in inches of pants sold during the morning at Manton's Tailors. It is thought that the waist size are normally distributed. Do the following calculations and state whether the results confirm the statement. So first we're going to use our graphing calculator to determine the mean and the standard deviation because really those are the only two values we need in order to draw that curve or to know what's going on in that curve. So go ahead and put that in your calculator and see if you get the same mean and standard deviation of mean. I get a mean of 35.7 inches and a standard deviation of 2.1 inches. What we size is one standard deviation above the mean and what we size is one standard deviation below the mean. Well why? Because when you do this, and you've got your mean, if we go one above and one below, well we can still test 
that 68% without actually have to, having to do all that, the rest of the work. So if we calculate that, so the mean plus one standard deviation would be 35.7 plus 2.1, and that would give us 37.8 inches. Then we've got the mean minus one standard deviation, that would be 35.7 minus 2.1, which would give us 33.6 inches. All right, so now our next job is to look at our table above here and see what values are within that range. So let's count. Well, 34, 36, plus 34, 36, 36, 34, 34, 36. Go ahead and keep going. Okay, so if you are counting there, we have 16 values. Okay, so count the number of scores lying between the two values and B, express your answer, answer as a percentage of the total number of scores. So we've got 16 out of 24, times that by 100%, and we get 66.7%. So yes, we can say, we conclude that it is normally distributed. So a little bit less time to go through that knowing that that's what we're testing. We're just testing that midpoint, that middle of that normal curve to see if it holds true to what we know. That's it for today's lesson. Thanks for joining me.